Hi, welcome to this uh, video lecture. Today I will introduce you a mechanical property which is known as toughness, toughness of material. I would like to do an experiment using these plastic spoons. So I've got two types of spoons and I'm going to bend them and see how they react. So for example, this spoon, I'm going to bend. Well, it broke. It could not take large deformation. Now if I bend this one, it continues to bend without fracture. So these two types of plastics have quite different mechanical properties. This one cannot take large deformation. If we apply force, then it fractures. This one can take large deformation without fracture. But in terms of strength, if we measure the strength as a tensile material, the maximum stress or the yield strength of these two materials might be very close to each other, but they have very different mechanical property in terms of fracture. So these types of two different properties, two different behaviors of materials can be understood through toughness. So there are two types of uh, mechanical properties which are very important for materials. One is strength and another is toughness. So for any engineering application or for any engineering material, these two properties are extremely important because strength means how much load the material can take when we subject to tension or compression. So if this material is under tension, how much load it can take. And toughness basically means that how much energy it can absorb before it fractures before it fractures. So in these two examples, this material could absorb large amount of energy during my bending. Same will happen if you are doing a tensile test. So it can absorb large amount of energy and this energy is basically the force multiplied by this you know, displacement. So I'm applying the force and I'm making it deform. So this is displacement. So this much of energy it can absorb without fracture. I do not see any sign of fracture. Whereas in this kind of material, if you apply stress or force, it will bend to some extent and then it will fracture. So this material could not absorb energy before it failed. So when we talk about strength, Always we plot this curve, stress as a function of strain. So how much stress we apply and what is the strain? So if we, if I plot the stress strain curve of a typical material, something like this. So this material goes in the elastic range it deforms in the elastic range. Beyond that, it goes into the plastic range, means the material is deforming and there is some plastic deformation going on inside the material. And at some point, it fractures. And this is the strain 
at which it failed. So fracture strain. Now another material, if I have, which also started in the elastic range, at some point it went in, into plastic, but it continued in the plastic range, the plastic deformation continues for much larger strength. So let's say this is material A and this is material B. So now in these two cases, material A is stronger than material B because it has got large fracture stress and also it has higher yield strength. But material B is tougher, we can see, because it can undertake, it can absorb a lot of energy. We are still deforming and until it fails at this point. So the strain given in the material is higher. And how we can know whether the toughness is higher or not is by calculating the area under the stress strain curve. So if I calculate the stress, the area under this curve for material B and then for material A, we will find that material B, the area under the stress strain curve for material B is larger than that for material A. Therefore, we will say that in terms of toughness, B is larger than A. Toughness of B is larger than A. So this is the concept of toughness. We can see what is the definition or what is the meaning of this stress area under the stress strain curve. So we can do the dimensional analysis. So this area will be given as sigma so strain is fracture strain and this sigma will be some average of the stress because the stress is not constant it is changing so therefore it will be an average of some average of stress so Dimensionally, this is given as Newton per meter square. This is the dimension of stress and the dimension of strain is actually strain is dimensionless. So therefore it does not have any dimensions. So, and this one can be then written as Newton meter per meter cube. This, they are same which can be then written as joule per meter cube. Newton meter is energy, is the dimension of energy. So this basically means energy divided by m cube. So meter cube is volume. So we can say that this area under the stress strain curve represents energy per unit volume. So this is what, what is the meaning of this toughness, which is also known as tensile toughness. So toughness of any material we can find out by plotting a stress strain curve until the fracture point and then finding out the area. You can calculate this area by integrating small section. So for example, if I divide this as a small incremental section,
whatever strain we take, and the stress at this. So area of this small element will be sigma 1 d epsilon. So basically we can divide this whole area into many segments and then we find out the area for each segment and then sum them up. That we have to do because this curve is, is changing. So this is the way we can find out tensile toughness which is quite a, an easy or a simpler way to find out the toughness of the material. It has been found that materials which has got very high strength, high strength materials tend to have lower toughness. The high strength materials tend to fracture at strains which are much lower than low strength material. But again, it also depends upon the material themselves. There are materials which have got very low toughness and there are materials which are naturally very high toughness material. For example, ceramic materials are very low toughness material, whereas most of the metals are very high toughness material. So in order to have very large area, it is important that the, the fracture strains should be high this should be high as well as the ductility should be high. That means the strain, fracture strains should be high. So both fracture stress and fracture strain should be high. So that we can get the maximum highest area under this curve. In order to compare the toughness between two materials, sometimes this parameter is also used. which is the ratio of toughness to the yield strength. This parameter basically means that how much material has got the toughness for its unit yield strength. So this ratio of different materials can also be compared to find out the actual toughness of the material. So this is the concept of toughness. So as I said, strength and toughness, we have to understand these two uh, quantities or properties. So here we will talk about tensile strength first. And as I said, tensile property is plotted as stress strength curve. So here I've got material A and material B. So material A has got higher fracture stress, material B has got lower fracture stress, but material A has got smaller fracture strain or total strain at fracture. Material B has got large fracture strain. So to find out the toughness, we will find out the area under this curve, stress strain curve for A and for B. So area under the stress strain curve is given as sigma multiplied by epsilon f and we can write as a dimensional quantity. So dimensional quantity of this will be Newton per meter square which changes to Newton meter divided by meter cube and this becomes joule per meter cube that means energy per unit volume. After this, the another concept of toughness, which is actually the way historically people have understood about curve toughness, is known as notched bar impact test. So, in the very beginning, people understood that we can understand about the property of this toughness property of the material if we test it under impact.
So a brittle material will break under impact, whereas a material which has got high toughness or has high ductility will not break. It will deform, but it will not break. And all comes from something called presence of crack. So if this material is, for example, fixed here, and a large force, we impact this material with large force, then the cracks will initiate from here, and it will break. So generally, this large impact is done by a hammer. So this hammer is brought to hit this bar and the crack will propagate and it will fracture. So how much sensitive this material is to the presence of crack is an indication of toughness. A tough material will absorb a lot of energy before it fractures, whereas a brittle material will fracture very quickly. So for example, if you have a glass, you imagine a glass here, and you impact this one, very small, with very small amount of energy, it will fracture. But if you have got a, a metal like aluminum or copper, it will consume a lot of energy before it fractures. So this is the meaning, and basically this tells us about toughness. So this test was used originally to find out how much material, how tough the material is. And this was expressed as energy. Energy consumed in breaking a notched specimen. So that's why it is called notched bar impact test. And how much energy it has consumed can be found out by if the hammer is originally like this and it is released from here. Okay? So it has got potential energy, it is released from here and it comes and hits. And after the material, after hitting the material, it will rise again further but it will not rise up to this point because the sum of the energy has been used for breaking this specimen so it will rise up to certain height. So the difference between the original height and the height it has risen to, so this height is measured. Okay, so a dial will show how much rise it has it has gone up to, how much height it has gone up to. So we can find out the height, the difference between this height and this height. So this is H. And we know the mass of this hammer and the gravitational acceleration, G, and H. H is this one. So this tells us the energy it has consumed in breaking the specimen. So this is how we can find out toughness property of a material by conducting a notched bar impact test. So the notched bar impact tests are conducted in two, two ways. One is called isod impact test and another one is called charpy impact test. Concept is same for both cases, but the way the specimen is, is subjected to impact load is slightly different. In the case of isod impact test, the bar is kept vertical in this way, vertical, and this is the V notch. And the hammer hits 
on the face where the V notch is there. So this is called isod impact test. Whereas in Sharpie test, the specimen is kept horizontal and the hammer hits the specimen on the back side of the V notch surface. So from this side. And in both cases, the idea is the same. So the hammer has got some potential energy and when it hits the specimen and again rises to some extent, so the height difference basically tells us how much energy has been consumed. So this is given as mgh, so this is the energy. And then we can plot the energy, so energy itself tells us about the toughness of the material. It is important in this test that all the specimens you are testing must have same dimensions because toughness property is also dependent on the specimen size. So therefore the dimensions must be the same. So here as you can see the specimen size is given and V notch has to be 45 degree V notch 2 millimeter deep with a 0.25 mm root radius. So radius of the root of this notch has to be this much. So this is a standard. This is part of ASTM standards. So the specimen dimensions must be the same so that we can compare. So this is basically a comparison between, between two materials if the material shape and size are exactly the same. So this data can be plotted in this way. We can plot energy on y-axis and other parameters on x-axis. Other parameters can be for example temperature because with the variation of temperature material changes its property. As we go from low temperature to higher temperature material will change from low toughness to higher toughness. So this is often in the case of metals this is known as ductile to brittle transition temperature. The temperature at which the, this transition happens is called DBTT, ductile to brittle transition temperature because at low temperature the material is has got lower toughness. So which means the material is behaving like a brittle. At higher temperature it is tougher. So that's why it is called ductile to brittle transition temperature. Sometimes the toughness can also change because of some other reasons for example inclusions for example, some inclusion such as sulfur or phosphorus in steel, in the case of steel, or any kind of factor we can plot here and we can see how the toughness changes. So this is a method to find out toughness. So this value of toughness that we obtain energy, so this quantity energy basically is an indication of the amount of work that is necessary for crack nucleation, crack propagation and also the amount of plastic work that is carried out in this deformation and fracture. So these two types of toughness parameters, tensile toughness and the notch bar impact test are good quantities for comparing materials, for comparing materials toughness. But these data are difficult to be used in a design work. So when we are designing, these values may not, cannot be used because these values respond to many properties. For example, crack nucleation, crack propagation, plastic deformation. So these are all combined values. So they all tell us about toughness, but the, the quantity or the property that we get, the values we, we get are difficult to, you, to be used in design purpose. So if for design purpose, we can use another term which is also known as toughness. But here the toughness is in relation to crack propagation. So if you have a specimen and you subject it to a tensile load, then this crack will grow. So both sides this crack, crack will grow until it brings fracture. So this, in this case 
the stress that we have applied and the energy that is being consumed in propagating the crack so the energy is used for the opening of the crack and propagating the crack this way so how much new surface is being formed so this stress basically the energy which is being consumed in making new surfaces so this is another way to define toughness and in this case toughness is a measure of energy absorbed per unit new crack area created so when we when the crack propagates basically new surface area is being created so this this side new surface and also this side new surface so this so amount of energy absorbed per unit of the new surface area created is known as toughness now let us look at this figure so this is a plain stress condition of a specimen so this specimen has unit thickness and this specimen has got a crack in the center the dimension of this crack is 2c sigma is the nominal stress that means the stress we apply on this specimen this crack has thickness which is unit thickness so we assume that this thickness goes all the way through the material now when we apply the stress at the two ends this crack will get stressed so the stress will be also experienced at this crack so when a stress sigma is applied in the specimen with a crack for every incremental increase in crack length dc so this crack is going to grow so as it grows it creates new length in the crack so for every incremental increase in crack length dc there is an increase in the new crack surface area and with the new surface area it will have new surface energy as well as you know every surface has got surface energy associated so that means when we create new surface area we are actually going to increase the energy of this system because new surface area means new surface energy associated and there is a decrease in the elastic strain energy so the surface energy will increase but as the crack grows there will be a decrease in the elastic strain energy so elastic strain energy is associated with any material which has got stress in it so whenever we apply the stress and this stress will lead to some strain and because of this strain the whole material will get what is called elastic strain energy so the material is still within the elastic range so this energy is in the system so when the crack grows the elastic strain energy will reduce that means the material will relax to some extent but the surface area or surface energy will increase so there is a decrease in the elastic strain energy that is stored in the crack tip so here near the crack tip there will be high amount of strain energy associated when these two energies are balanced a condition is created for the crack growth or crack to grow so we are dealing with two energies one energy is going to reduce as the crack grows another energy surface energy is going to increase so as you know every system would like to minimize the energy so this crack will grow only if the total energy of the system is going to reduce that means the elastic strain energy release is slightly higher than the surface energy created so this is the situation so a limiting situation will be when these two energies are equal so this is the basis of why a crack will grow because there are two energies the elastic strain energy which is in the system and especially near the crack tip so as the crack grows the elastic strain energy will reduce but as the crack grows the new surface area will be created therefore the surface energy will increase there is a balance between these two now i said that near the crack tip there is lot of elastic strain energy this is because of the stress concentration you may know that when there is a crack near the crack tip there is a stress concentration so even though we are applying the stress sigma which is called nominal stress but actual stress as the crack at the crack tip will be much higher and this graph shows schematically 
how the stress will vary in this direction. So near the crack tip, very high stress. As we go away from the crack tip, the stress will become the nominal stress. And this maximum stress near the crack tip is given by this equation. So sigma max is approximately equal to 2 sigma. Sigma is the nominal stress multiplied by C over rho to the power 1 by 2. C is half crack length and rho is the crack tip radius. So here this is the crack tip and the radius of this crack tip is rho. So you can see the sharper the crack tip that means smaller the value of rho. So if the crack tip is very sharp the value of rho will be small the stress will be high. Any crack which has got very sharp crack tip will have very high stress associated with it. That means at the crack tip the stress will be very high. So this is the reason why a brittle material tends to fracture more easily than a ductile material. Because for brittle material the crack tip is very very sharp like for example glass and this crack tip at this crack tip the stress is very high. Whereas for a ductile material like a, a soft iron for example at this point when the stress increases there will be ductile deformation. And this ductile deformation will blunt the crack. It is known as blunting of the crack because by blunting we mean the value of rho will increase and therefore the stress will come down. So for ductile material at the crack tip the stress is low but for brittle material at the crack tip the stress is very high and this is the reason why a brittle material is more prone to fracture compared with ductile material. Now let us get back to this energy equivalence or energy balance. So the change in total energy of the system delta ut is equal to us plus ue. us is the energy the surface energy which is increasing and ue which is the elastic strain energy which is reducing. So at the necessary condition for crack growth so just at the point when the crack might start growing d delta ut over dc is equal to zero. So let me explain to you this energy graph and how we can decide whether a, an existing crack will grow or not. So for any material, a material will have cracks of different dimensions. It will have population of cracks but whether these cracks or out of these cracks which crack is going to grow can be decided by this energy graph. For a given stress, so whatever stress level we have in the material, so this is a nominal stress. So for a given nominal stress we can decide which size of the crack is going to grow. So in this graph we have on y-axis we have energy and x-axis we have got half crack size which is C. Now let us see the different crack sizes. For zero crack size of course there is no energy associated with it. For a crack which is has got dimension of this for example this size of the crack. For this crack this red line indicates the surface energy and this green line indicates the elastic strain energy decrease. Now since the surface energy is going to increase as the crack size increases so we have got this line on the positive side and this is a linear function of gamma s. So gamma s is the surface energy per unit area. The elastic strain energy is decreasing because for this crack size if the crack is going to grow the elastic en strain energy will decrease. So therefore there will be a total decrease in the energy of the system. So this is how it is decided. So delta ut this blue line is the resultant of the two. That means this minus this. Since this is linear and this is quadratic function there will be a point when this the total energy change is going to change its its trend from increasing to decreasing. That means up to this crack size at the given stress there will be increase in the energy of the system if the crack is going to grow. So that means this condition will not let the crack grow any further. So any crack of this size 
will not grow at this given stress. But if there is a crack which has got the critical crack size, then this crack is prone to grow because any minor increase in the stress will lead to a spontaneous growth of the crack because energetically it is very favorable because at this point the total energy of the system can decrease if the crack size is going to grow. So the system will prefer to decrease the energy of the total energy of the system so that means the crack will grow. So this is how we can decide whether the material whether the cracks present in the material are critical or not or whether they are going to grow in a spontaneous way or not. So if the crack sizes are in this range then for this stress none of the crack is actually going to grow which means that the material is quite safe. But if the crack is of critical crack size then at the given stress this material is prone to fracture in a spontaneous way. So by using this energy balance calculation actually we can find out whether the crack size that is existing crack size whether it is critical or not at any given stress. Differential will be zero and this we have already given as us plus ue. So us is the surface energy and here I will tell you how we obtain this one. When the crack is growing for example First of all, we should know that crack has got two surfaces, one above this one and one is the below. So that's why we have got two. Then 2C. 2C is the crack length here multiplied by this dimension, which is the thickness, which is the unit. So it becomes area and area multiplied by the surface energy, which is the energy associated with per unit surface area. So this whole thing becomes the surface energy of the crack and the elastic strain energy is given by this one. So here again we have got two because there are two tips here and the elastic strain energy in general is given by sigma square over 2e. So here sigma is the nominal stress. So we are not talking about the stress near the crack tip but we are talking about the overall stress which is called nominal stress. So sigma square over 2e is the strain energy per unit volume in any strained material in any material which has got which is under strain. So multiplied by the volume we can get the energy. Now the volume is approximated as pi c square multiplied by the unit length here. The amount of volume that is strained that is affected by this crack is approximated as pi c square. c is the radius and you can draw a circle of c radius and you multiply with the thickness of this specimen. So that gives the volume of the material multiplied by the strain and energy per unit volume. So total becomes the total volume. So as I have said for unit crack width, the width of the crack we have taken as 1. So this equation is for unit crack width. Now this equation can be solved and if you solve this equation you get this and from here you can write this equation. So sigma is equal to 2 gamma s. Gamma s is the surface energy of this material E over pi c within bracket power 1 over 2. Now sigma has been converted into sigma f to indicate that this is the fracture stress. So this is the critical stress at which the fracture will initiate. So this gamma s is a constant for a material. E is also a constant. So here we can see the relation between sigma f and c which is the crack length. So there is a relation between the fracture stress and the crack length. So as we increase the crack length the fracture stress is going to go down, decrease. So that means if the crack length is large so this material is going to fracture at a lower stress. When the crack length is smaller, this is a very small crack length, then the stress at which the material is going to fail is going to increase. So this relation gives a very useful relation between the crack length and the fracture stress. Now this part of the equation can be written in this way where 2 gamma s is written as g and g is the toughness of the material. So G is 
This G is defined as the toughness of the material which has units of kilojoule per meter square. So the energy per unit area. So this is how we define toughness. So toughness is a property of a material and this property is related to the fracture of the material when in the presence of crack. Now you might have studied about Griffith criterion. So this equation is known as Griffith criterion for crack growth in brittle materials. So Griffith gave the equation, this analysis and this equation for brittle material, but this equation is also applicable for other materials which has ductility. So therefore this equation is quite general and we can obtain toughness of any material. All we have to do is to conduct a test like this with a crack in it. This crack can also be a surface crack instead of a bulk crack. So when it is a surface crack then you can imagine this will be only half part of this crack because at the surface you cannot have this kind of elliptical crack. So at the surface you will have got half of the elliptical crack. So therefore the length of this crack will be given as C. So we will write only C for surface crack. We can write this equation GE to the power 1 over 2 as equal to sigma F under root pi C. So sigma F is the fracture stress for a given crack length. So that means these are critical. This is called critical crack length. That means at this crack length and this stress the fracture will initiate. And this value of sigma f under root pi c is known as the critical stress intensity factor or fracture toughness which is given by kic. But in this relation another term is introduced which is y. y is a geometrical factor. So depending upon the geometry of the crack and the geometry of the specimen the value of y may change change. But this is only numerical value. Often for simplicity we can take y as 1. So this is a very valuable another valuable equation using which we can find out the fracture toughness of the material. So now you can see that the fracture toughness of the material is related to the toughness through this equation. And these are all for the critical crack. By critical crack we mean that we have applied the stress enough that the crack is going to grow. It is starting to grow. So just at the point of growing we can say that the crack is critical the, and the crack is growing and at this point these equations are valid. So this analysis I have presented for any bulk material, any material. In this experiment I am going to show you how a crack, um, how the presence of crack will initiate fracture. So this is a pair of chopsticks and here if you see a crack has already been formed here. So these chopsticks come with a crack in it and all we are supposed to do is to pull these two parts of the chopsticks apart and this crack will grow. But what you might have noticed that if you are going to pull this apart the crack will not open so the crack will not grow until a certain stress is achieved and once the stress is achieved you the crack will go, grow very spontaneously that means there is no way you can control the growth of the crack once it initiates so this exactly shows the satisfies the condition of fracture mechanics that means for a brittle material the crack will initiate it will start growing at the critical stress so at the critical stress the crack size is also critical so it's a combination of the crack size and the stress that will satisfy the condition for this crack to grow as we have discussed in the theory since this wooden stick wooden chopstick is a dry wood so it behaves as a brittle material and the fibers are aligned in this direction so this is this material behaves as brittle material if this was to be a green wood or in wet condition or maybe if, if it was plastic 
then this crack will not grow even if you pull apart this crack will grow slowly it will not grow spontaneously so now let's do the experiment so I'm going to pull apply stress and see at what point the crack continue, starts growing so this shows that once the critical stress was achieved the crack grew spontaneously it did not stop in between so this is what happens in a brittle material that for the presence of any size of crack there is a critical crack size for the stress so as the stress is increased the crack size once the crack size becomes critical it will start growing and it this growth will be spontaneous so in this video i have introduced you three types of toughness measurement so the first one was based on tensile test so in this test we can find out the toughness of the material using the stress strain curve the second one was notched bar impact test and the third one was based on the concept of fracture mechanics So we can find out toughness by all these three methods. This is quite easy to perform. For example, we can conduct the tensile test and we can find out the area under the stress strain curve. This one is requires some instrumentation, but these two methods are very good for comparing between different materials. The last one, the fracture mechanics approach, which is based on Griffith criterion is suitable for design purpose so in any kind of design equation you can use the fracture toughness found out by fracture mechanics approach so in the fracture mechanics approach we find out the toughness which is basically energy absorbed in creating a new crack surface area so we can use either of these three but the third one the fracture mechanics approach can be used for any design calculation. So thank you very much for joining this lecture.